that um at this moment, if you have a paper to make it passed out, everything that I'm going to um talk about and go over should be on that paper. Amen. Amen. The scriptures I'm going to use and everything that I want to discuss today will be on that paper. Everybody say this is my shifting season. This is my shifting season. This is my shifting season. Amen, amen, man. First and foremost, I'd like to give my Lord Savior Jesus Christ all the praise and glory for allowing me to be here today. Uh, I definitely want to give blessings to the angels of this house. Y'all have great pastors. Not only are they great pastors, um, I call them my friends. They are my friends. So if he wasn't lying, I used to sleep on their porch. <laughs> I, yeah, I used to have my own bed on a swing on that porch. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. But everybody see I'm a miracle. Yeah. Also, I want to give honor to my bishop, David Adam Abbey Senior, and Pastor Darlene Hadley. Um, also, honor my beautiful wife. Other than that, everybody, I love y'all. I just can't get it for the work. Amen. So let's go to work. So the scriptures that I'm going to read are going to be Joshua chapter 1, verse 8, Acts 26, 16 through 18, 1 Timothy 4, 12 through 16. If you have the paper, you can look at it. I got it on paper because I'm going to let it flow. Somebody say, let it flow. Yeah, yeah meaning I'm going to just keep rolling. So I got the paper for y'all so y'all can just follow me. Y'all see those scriptures I just mentioned? Yeah. All right, we're going to read these scriptures and then I'm going to go back and I'm not going to exegesis these texts. I'm going to give you spiritual principles that the Holy Spirit gave me. Amen? Amen. Okay, y'all with me? First, his first scripture is Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. It says, this book of the Lord shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night. That you observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. But rise, stand on your feet, for I have appeared to you for this purpose, to make you a minister and a witness, both of the things you have seen and the things I have yet revealed to you. I will deliver you from your own people and from the outsiders, to whom I now send you, to open their eyes in order to turn them from darkness to light from the power of Satan to God that they may receive the forgiveness of sins and an inheritance among those who are sanctified by faith in me. Let no one despise your youth, but be an example to the believers in your words, your conduct, your love, your spirit, your faith, and your purity. Till I come, you give attention to reading, to exhortation, and to doctrine. Do not neglect the gift that is in you which was given to you by prophecies of the land of the hands of the eldership. Meditate on these things. Give yourself entirely to them. For in doing this, you will save not only yourself, but everybody that hears you. Everybody say, this is my shifting season. This is my shifting season. This is my shifting season. Listen to me. It's time to change course en route to our destination. But the change of course is not insinuating that God had to choose a plan B. The change of course was already factored into God's plan A for your life. Some of us, when we're making a shift, listen to me. When you shift it or going into a different direction, you can't do this casually. You have to shift on purpose. Everybody say, I'm shifting on purpose. I'm shifting on purpose. God Almighty. Listen, I, when I get up in the morning and I go to my job, I don't go to that job for no reason. I go to that job on purpose. The woman that I married, that is not no getting married for no reason. I married her on purpose. Everybody say, I'm shifting on purpose. I'm shifting on purpose. Sometimes you're going to find yourself having to switch jobs. Sometimes you might shift buildings at the same job. Sometimes you might find yourself being pulled back. Everybody say, I'm being pulled back. I'm being pulled back. God Almighty. But the Holy Spirit brought to my remembrance that when I was a kid, I used to play with something that I had to pull back. And the thing that I used to play with was the slingshot. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. I gotta catch this in the spirit. The slingshot. The slingshot. I used to play with the slingshot, but when I picked the rock up, and then when I pulled it back and let it rip, the rock went a hundred times farther from where it was pulled back from. So even if you feel like you're being pulled back, you're only 
conversation you had. Meditate on it day and night. This is not something that you casually do. This is something you have to do on purpose. Everybody say I'm shifting on purpose. God said he's going to do anything. He said, why? Well, I got to do it. 
If I gave you the keys, I gave you the keys. Not only in that scripture, I believe it's in Matthew, when you talk about he gave the keys to the kingdom. He didn't say one key. Good God, man. He said keys with an S. So if you have the keys, when you face a dilemma, say, Lord, what key you want me to use? Nothing can stop the child of God. You are an unstoppable force of nature. Good God Almighty. Man, all you have to do is shift your purpose. You have to shift your mind from being a victim to a victor. You have to shift your mind from trying to defeat the devil to telling that devil we already know. You have to shift on purpose. Everybody say I'm shifting on purpose. I found myself facing some stuff recently that just came out of nowhere. And even if I didn't have a thing to face it, my wife walked in the room yesterday, touched me on my head, and said, you can use my faith for this, sir. She said, I hit off your face so much, you can use mine for this. And then we were sitting down, and she said, somebody got to stop cooking around here, because she's tired of cooking. I said, can I use your faith for that? Can I use your faith for that? I'm like, burn it up. Somebody said, I'm shifting on purpose. I'm shifting on purpose. Hallelujah. Praise, praise. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Let's move. Let's move because I want to get to all this. But if I don't, that's why I gave y'all the paper. Amen. Let's move to the next principles. This, the next scripture, the principles come from the scriptures, Acts 26, 16 through 18. It says, But rise, stand on your feet. This is the principle. Never allow the enemy to make you sit down on your purpose. Good God Almighty. The scripture says, rise, stand on your feet. Now, that the enemy will make you sit down on your purpose, because soon as you try to shift on your purpose, he will start bringing up the things you don't qualify for. He'll start bringing up where you messed up. He'll start bringing up all the things from your past. But don't allow the enemy to make you sit down on your purpose. That's why the Bible says, come boldly to the throne of grace. Lord, why do you want me to come boldly to the throne of grace? Because I called you knowing what you was going to do before you was born. God Almighty. Listen, so why shall I not come boldly? It says, but why stand on your feet? Everybody in here, stand on your feet. Good God Almighty. Stand up. Stand up. As the sound to show the enemy, even if my body's hurting, I'm still going to stand up on my purpose. Even if my finances is messed up, I'm still standing on my purpose. Don't allow the enemy to make you sit down on your purpose. Everybody say, I'm shifting on purpose. Why did dad die? If God was really for you, why this happened? That's all from the pit of hell. He's just trying to get you to sit down. So all he brings up is all the errors. He will never bring it up and say, you know you're a great man of God. You know you're a great woman of God. You know that you have this in the kingdom of God. You know your inheritance gives you real freedom. You know your inheritance considers of you being healed. He'll never bring that up. He'll bring up everything that happened bad in your life. Why would he say everything that happened bad in my mind? It's because he wants you to sit down on the purpose that God gave you. But the Lord put the word in my mouth to tell you, never allow the devil to make you sit down on your purpose. Everybody sounds shifting on purpose. 
something I'm doing because I want to do it. I'm doing it because he said I can. Jesus. Because he wants you to sit down. He wants you to stop supporting your pastor. He wants you to stay out of church. He wants you to do that. He wants you to sit down. That's a strategy straight from the pit of hell. But the devil messed up because he let you hear it here or he let you hear it on the line. That don't never allow the devil to make you sit down on your purpose. You said, but rise, stand on your feet. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, God. Thank you. Stand on your feet. That's good, man. That's good, man. It said, but rise, stand on your feet. For I have appeared to you for this purpose. Watch this. To make you a minister and a witness. This is the principle. Recognize that you're the message. Oh, man, listen. He says, the purpose that I appear to you is to make you a minister, more importantly, a witness. You are the proof that God is who God says he is. You are the message. You are now the message of Jesus Christ. When they see you, they see God. When they see you, they see the Father. When they see you, they see the Holy Spirit. You are the message. As I say, I'm the message. That's the word. He said, I appear to you for this purpose. Yes. To make you a minister. Thank you. And the witness. Speak the How is Jesus going to make me Speak. a witness? Speak. The reason he's going to make us witnesses is because all those people we met when we were in our mess, they still recognize us, but they can't believe. So when they see you, they see you. They don't even have to believe in Jesus, but they know it ain't your power. So when they see you, they see the message of Jesus Christ. He said, I appear to you for a purpose. Everything that Jesus did, he did for a purpose. And you have to shift on purpose. You have to change your mindset. You have to change the focus of the vision. You have to shift on purpose. Everybody say, I'm shifting on purpose. I tried to just sit back and be a Christian. Talk about it, man. But it was so much in me. I said, Lord, what do you want me to do? It said, stand on your feet. Pick your head up. Speak, Jesus. Listen, man. Speak, Jesus. Listen. I don't do it for no reason. I do it because of a purpose. He says, stand on your feet, for I have appeared to you to make you a minister and a witness. Watch this. Both of the things you have seen and the things I have yet revealed to you. Good God, yeah, Lord, I'll come. God will show you some things and shock you at the same time. <laughs> some things he'll show you, but likewise, he'll shock you. Some of the things he showed me that I was going to be doing. And some of the things. When they showed up, I said. Some things he will show you. And some things he will shock you. He says to make you witness both of the things you have seen. You see the scripture where it says you've seen it. And then it says, and the things I have yet revealed to you. Meaning some things he's going to show you. And some things he's going to <laughs> he's going to shock you. He's going to show you and reveal you later. And I believe, I can only speak for me, some of the things that he had to shock me with, if I would have knew I would have had to go through what I had to go through to get there, I probably would have abandoned ship. So he said, I can't show him this one. <laughs> he won't show you everything. He will show you some things and he will shock you. He says, I will deliver you. This is good. He says, I will deliver you from the Jewish people and from the Gentiles, to whom I now send you. Now, let me give you some context. The apostle Paul was actually from the Jewish people. So he says, I will deliver you from your own people. And the Gentiles was the outsiders at that time with Paul. So he says, I will deliver you from your own people and from the outsiders. This is the principle. God will deliver you from your own people 
and the outsiders. But the outsiders are your current ministry. This, just read the text. I'm not making it up. It says, I will deliver you from the Jewish people, his people, and from the Gentiles, the outsiders, to whom I now see you. Why is this so important? It's because even though we may not admit this, but some of our own people will try to put us in bondage. And God said, I will deliver you from your own people and the outsiders. But God said, I don't want you to worry about your own people right now because I need you to go to the outsiders. Why am I going to the outsiders? Because I need the outsiders to come into the body of Christ. I don't need you to spend time battling with people who are already saved. Let them work those issues out. You worry about the outsiders. The outsiders is who God called me to. If I don't reach the outsiders, then I'm not doing my purpose. If I'm not doing my purpose, then Jesus is about to take me home. Everybody say I'm shifting on purpose. I'm shifting on purpose. You have to go to the outsiders. He said I would deliver you from the whole people and the outsiders. But the scripture says, to whom I now send you. Meaning, your, your purpose is built right now. That's why you don't want to get caught up in church games. I, let, I, I, I don't really get caught up in that because he says, I am now sent to the outsiders. They don't even know church. So I'm going to go that's not just mine, that's everybody. That's right. He says, I will deliver you from your own people and from the outsiders. That's why when certain things happen, God gave me this word in 2010. But some of the things that happened didn't happen until eight years later. But when it happened, I smiled because he said, Yeah, you I told you. I told you I was gonna have to kill. <laughs> I told you. So you have to remember, it's a purpose that God has. If you go back to the scripture, it starts off and it says, Barah, stand on your feet, for I have appeared to you for this purpose. So everything you're reading, this is the Apostle Paul talking. He's giving them understanding in regards to the purpose he has. God, stand on your feet. He said, Barah, stand on your feet, for I have appeared to you for this purpose. Next, I want to show you where it says to open their eyes. Okay, back up. It says, 17 says, I will deliver you from the Jewish people and from the Gentile to whom I now sing you. To whom I now sing you. To open their eyes. Now, this is the purpose. Everybody say, this is my assignment. This is my assignment. He's talking about the purpose that he said to the people on the outside. So God said, I will deliver you from them. Don't worry about them. And I will deliver you from the outsiders to whom I now send you. He says, this is the reason why I'm sending you to them. To open their eyes. Everybody say to open their eyes. Open their eyes. And to turn them from darkness to light. Good word. Good word, everything. You get me. Listen, y'all got to get it how it all correlates. It says to open their eyes and turn a dark place to light. To deliver them from darkness to light. That's why when he was talking, I said, did I give him my notes? But I can't forget that the Holy Spirit works on one accord. So when he was talking about darkness and light, this scripture says this is the reason why I don't need to to be casually doing nothing. I need you to worry about the outside. It says to open their eyes in order to turn them from darkness to light, from the power of Satan to Now, look at the purpose. Why, God? He says, so they can receive the forgiveness of sins and an inheritance. God wants them to get what we receive. That's why you don't have time worrying about somebody that already got something. I need to worry about getting them into the kingdom of God because it looked like the city going down. I gotta hurry up and minister to people who have never accepted Jesus. It's no more time to be playing. I'm shifting on purpose. Good God Almighty, man. Thank you, Lord. Good, my good man. Good work. He said, I will deliver you from your own people and to the outsiders. Take your time. To whom? I now 
That's my assignment now. My assignment, your assignment, our assignments will change. They will shift, literally. But now is to go to the outside. That's the assignment. Now, let's shift to 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 12 through 16. I'm going to sound good. Take your time, man. All right. I hope I'm being a blessing this to somebody. Right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is what it's right, man. Let's go. Y'all Y'all good? Amen. I'm going to give you a couple more and then that's it. In 1 Timothy, it says, let no one despise your youth. Watch this, but be an example to the believers in your words, your conduct, your love, your spirit, your faith, and your purity. I need y'all to pay attention. You remember the last scriptures I said God said don't worry about them. Worry about the outsiders. He said I will deliver you from them. But check this, this scripture out. He says, but be an example to who? The believer. He said, let them see you. And don't worry about them, but be an example to the believer in your words, your conduct, your love, your spirit, your faith, your purity. That no matter what's going on over here, as long as you are being an example of those things, you don't have to worry about anything. Everybody say, I'm the example. I'm the example. You must be an example, not only for the non-believer, but also to the believer. Because when someone says something about you, and you're walking in those things, and you're being an example, it will be hard fight to try to, to battle that in court. Because if somebody says something about you, but you're showing something different, you're being an example. But we must be the example. It says, let no one despise your youth. This youth doesn't mean age. This youth means you might just be starting out in ministry. And you might be intimidated by people who have been in ministry longer than you. You might be on a job, and you might be intimidated about people who have been doing it longer than you. This don't let nobody despise your youth. You simply have to be the example. In your words, what I mean by words, if anybody walking down your, your hallway cursing people out, your words shouldn't match theirs. That's right. Be an example. Your words. That's right. What's coming out your mouth. That's right. I, you might. I ain't saying I ain't feel like cussing somebody out. I ain't gonna say it loud. I just like, nah, I'm not there. I don't. I, like, man, I can't believe you did that. You know what? I, can, I got it. It's funny because I got somebody at my work. She, she's still in the process. We call her. I call her. I say she's in the process. But somebody will do something and she'll let it rip. She'll let them happen. I'll be like, I can't say it. But. <laughs> She didn't let them have it. No, that was, you know, she would just tell them. That was just me. That's my girl, too. I'll be having her with me. I said, I don't know why I always got you over here with me, but she's very good people. Um, everybody say, I'm the example. I'm the example. You must always be the example. The next one is, it says, till I come, you give attention to reading. Give attention to reading. Devote yourself to reading. Not only Bibles, but also other books. Here, yeah, Lord, I got it. You have an anointing from the Holy One and you know all things. What does that mean? That means you can read a book by a person who don't even believe in Jesus and the Holy Spirit can give you biblical revelation from the book. But if you never pick it up and say, I only read the Bible, you need to read other books because you can read things from things that's not even of God and God will give you a spiritual revelation. You have to give yourself attention to Reading. Everybody say, I must read. I must read. That's right. I'm not too super spiritual. I don't read that. Man, you better read it because God can give you a business idea out of a book that they don't even know exists. That's good. It says, give attention to what? Reading. Read. I was, I was, <laughs> I had to take this the other day. They had words on there. I didn't know how to see these words. I said, I almost took, ran out of the test and the woman asked my wife or somebody, Google or Alexa, I don't know. I ain't know none of these words. I was reading them. They start asking questions. And my wife, she got a real funny sense. Sometimes I don't really like it. Yeah, I don't really like it. But anyway, 
So I'm taking these tests, and I'm taking this a science test. And they ask you about dissecting bugs, right? I'm like, I don't do this. So one of the questions, <laughs> and my wife funny sense of humor, one of the questions asked me something about roaches. She said, I know you got that one right. <laughs> I said, you know, I really don't like you sometimes. She said, boy, you grew up, you had roses in your house. She said, you, you got that right. I said, I don't like my wife sometimes. No. I, I was in the car cracking up because I got it right. But anyway, let's move. <laughs> He's going to be praised, man. I don't know He's going to be praised. <laughs> Ah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they asked a question about can a roach do this? And I said, nah, you can't. <laughs> I'm a roach, a roach, a roach expert. <laughs> and asked about, I said, nah, roaches can't do that. And yeah, I, I know. But anyway, <laughs> thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Never know when he gets knocked. <laughs> and that was on a science test. <laughs> Whoa, man, I got to move. Next one. The next one is 14. It says, do not neglect the gift that is in you. Everybody says it's an inside job. It's an inside job. And uh, in one of my books back there, my purpose is greater in your struggle. One of the chapters is called, it's an inside job. I actually preach a message, or I often preach a message about it being an inside job. Everything that you need is already in you. You don't have to go outside to look for anything. Everything you need is inside you. Not only are you in the possession of the keys to the kingdom of God, but Christ is in you. And you are in Christ. And everything that pertains to the world, you are in possession of. You just need to sit down, slow down, spend some time, watch this, with yourself, and discover the gifts that you have in you. When I first started speaking, I used to pour down sweat and not from being hot. I used to pour down sweat and like, oh my God. It was a total different thing. But I found out the reason why the enemy was trying to intimidate me is because it was something that was in me. So sometimes you're going to be scared. Anytime you agree to do something and you feel a little bit nervous, that's okay. That shows that you truly need God. Because I was facing some stuff, and I said, man, I'm nervous. And I said, I'm in a good place. Because, Lord, if it's going to get done, it's definitely going to get done because of you. You do not neglect the gift that's in you. You have the gift in you. I don't care who you are. Everybody that accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior, he has endowed in you, put in you a purpose. You have an assignment. You have an assignment, and when we click up and get together, we are on a kingdom mission. Everybody say, I'm shifting on purpose. I don't do nothing just to do it. You shouldn't do anything just to do it. This is all about the kingdom of God. Do not, the scripture says, do not neglect the gift, the gift that's in, is in you. That's a great place where it should be because the enemy can't get what's in you. So God hid the gift in you somewhere he can never get to. That's why you got to tap into that. The next one is 15. Meditate on these things. Give yourself entirely to them. He says, whatever you find to discover your purpose is, he says, meditate on these things. Now that you know what your particular purpose is, meditate on it. And then as you meditate on it, the Holy Spirit will guide you down the path he wants you to go through. When I found out what my purpose was, now I meditate on the purpose that God placed in me. Once I discovered what he placed in me, now I meditated on it. And soon I know that this door had opened because I used the right set of keys. I don't mind. I didn't have to kick it down. I used the right set of keys. Watch this. Sometimes the key God makes you use is you doing nothing. Ah, oh, man, you got to get this. Some of the keys God makes you use will represent you doing nothing. 
And that's the place that we don't like to be in. Because a lot of times we think God is taking us through tested trials to help us develop our faith. No, faith comes by the word and the word of God. When we're going through trials and tribulations, God is trying to perfect our patience. Good God. It's not our faith. He's trying to perfect our patience. They both go together. But we have to understand whatever our purpose is, whatever we discover, we have to meditate. It says meditate on these things. Watch these words. Give yourself entirely to them. Whatever the gifts are, he says, give yourself entirely to them. So I don't have to never focus about trying to get money. If I focus on giving myself entirely to my purpose, the money will automatically be there. You have to give yourself entirely to whatever God put in you. If you give yourself entirely to whatever he has placed in you, it will automatically line up to what kingdom of God purpose is in your life, your pastor's life, your church's life, everybody that come next to you. I told you, you have a slingshot anointing. Everything is connected to that purpose. Everybody say purpose. Look at this where it says meditate on these things. No. It says do not neglect the gift that you have that's in you, which was given to you by prophecies with the laying in the hands of the other shit. Meditate on these things. Watch this. Give yourself entirely to them. This is not on your paper. That your progress may be evident to all. And this is not even on there. This is, the, this is so good. It says that if you do what you're supposed to do in regards to your purpose, it will be evident to everybody. See, when individuals who knew me, who knew me from way back, when they see me now, it's evident to them that I'm a changed man. See, when you're doing what you're supposed to do, it will be evident to all. Everybody will see that you, watch this, are the message. Oh, man. <laughs> I told you, you're the message. Yeah. It will be evident to all. You don't have to preach any sermon. All you got to do is live your life, and you will be the message. It will be evident to all that you're not the woman or the man that you used to be. It will be evident to all. This is the principles and purposes that God gave me. You want to be, you are the message. We are the reason. We are the proof that God is who he says he is. Just like he talks about miracles. You're the miracle. You have to look at yourself every day and say, I'm the miracle. Because Jesus Christ put you here and he says, you're the message. When they see you, they're going to see a miracle. <laughs> when they think it can't be done and they see you, they're going to say it can't be done. Next one. Thank you, Lord. It says 16. Take heed to yourself and the doctrine, continuing them. For in doing this, you will save both yourself and those that hear you. The reason why, take heed to yourself and the doctrine. The reason why you have to take heed, watch this here, yeah, Lord, I got it. I won't forget it. The reason why you have to take heed to yourself and the doctrine. Is because you are supposed to look like the Bible. Take heed to yourself and the doctrine. If you're taking heed to the doctrine and then evaluating yourself, take, you're not measuring yourself up based on what another man or woman say you should look like. You take heed to yourself and the doctrine. Every day I get up, I take heed to myself and the doctrine. I take heed to myself in the doctrine. If I take heed to myself and I know I'm not supposed to do it, I repeat and say, God, thank you for forgiving me. And then I pay attention to the doctrine. The reason why you're doing that is because you will save not only yourself. <laughs> the scripture says you'll save not only yourself, but everybody that hears you. Because now you look like Christ. So you're, you're not only saving yourself, you're saving everybody that hears you. So take heed to yourself and the doctrine. The reason why you take heed to the doctrine is because you need to know what you're supposed to look like. I don't mind, right? Thank you, Lord. Everybody say, Jesus. Jesus. I look like you. I look like you. Say, Jesus. Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Showing me, Show me what you look like. What you look He's like. Heard it to you. Hallelujah. 
when you're making a shift in your life and you're shifting and sometimes um, you might not like the shift that you're making, you have to remember that you're shifting on purpose and the reason why God has you shifting on purpose is because he has kingdom principles and kingdom things that he's trying to do. When it feels like you have to change position or change locations, don't, don't feel down. Sometimes, and more importantly, you might feel like you're being pulled back. But always remember <laughs> the slingshot. Yeah. When the rock right here, you pick it up and pull it back. Yeah. When you let it go, the rock is no longer in front of you. The rock is a hundred times. And remember, you're in Christ. And Christ is the rock. And if you're in Christ, and you're in the rock, and the rock is in you, and the rock get pulled back, and the rock goes way down there, that's you. You go with them. You got to think. Everybody say, I'm shifting on purpose. Right now, we don't have an altar call. Anybody in here who have never accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior, I pray right now. Everybody say, Jesus. I believe. I believe. You're the Son of God. You're the Son of God. Say, Jesus. Jesus. I, believe. I believe. You died for me. Rose for, for me. It will come back again for me. Again. Say, Jesus, Jesus. I, confess I confess with my mouth, my mouth. and believe, believe in my heart, my heart. that I, I am saved. saved. Welcome yourself to the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. He's worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be praised. Right now, I'm going to ask you for anybody if you want to stand. If you're able to stand up and stand up and receive, we want to do this prayer. If you never accepted Jesus, I mean, if you never accepted, you can come up front. Everybody else, if you are already accepting them, you are already in the kingdom. Let's look to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you right now, Father God. I pray that your word fell on good ground, Father God. I pray that everything, Father God, that you spoke, Father God, that pertains to their purpose, Father God, that it will be rooted and can't be uprooted by the enemy, Father God. More importantly, Father God, we pray for this whole this building, Father God. We pray for the pastor, Father God. We pray for the first lady. We pray for all the ministers, Father God. Thank you for putting them in a position of an assignment that many won't want to take, Father God, in the name of Jesus. More importantly, Father God, allow us to be the miracles, Father God, and be the message that everybody should see, Father God. Allow us to be a vision, a proof that people can see Jesus Christ through our lives, Father God. Thank you for forgiving us for our flaws, Father God. Thank you for giving us for our sins, Father God. More importantly, thank you for even considering to put us in the kingdom of God right now, Father God. Right now, everybody who's dealing with any type of illnesses, Father God, we plead the blood of Jesus over any sicknesses, Father God, in the name of Jesus. We bind the enemy hands, Father God. We will walk in the healing that Jesus gave us, Father God, in the name of Jesus. This we ask in Jesus' name. Everybody say amen. Say amen. Say amen. 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 God bless y'all. Thank y'all. Come on, somebody help me give God a praise in this place. If you enjoyed the word of God, and then I want you to stand to your feet, and I want you to give God the...